What's going on guys and welcome to a new episode of the LOI Transfer Show. There has been some good news in the League of Ireland actually as a whole. Yesterday, SSE Airtricity did confirm that for the, they will sponsor the league for another two years, which of course is fantastic news. And it really provides a lot of security and peace of mind for kind of a lot of the clubs up and down the country really. And um, I was a little bit worried about it myself, but thank God it's in place now and I can really look forward to the 2021 season, which has a start date of the 19th of March for the Premier Division, the 26th of March for the First Division and the Women's National League. But yeah, as I said, it is an LOI transfer show, so we are going to be running through a lot of the Premier Division and First Division sides. So yeah, let's just jump straight into it. We'll start off as we always do in alphabetical order with Bohemians and their ins. We'll start to look at first, obviously they brought in Bastien Harry. Um, I did say in the video where I said that a player each team needs to sign. I did say Bastien Harry for Bows and he is a brilliant signing. Him alongside Keith Buckley next year, that's going to be a fantastic midfield partnership and it really works well together you feel. And I'm um, excited to see him back in the League of Ireland. Obviously he was recently with Linfield so it will be uh, very exciting to see him back. Bows have also confirmed the signing of Stephen Malone he was on loan with Derry City last season from Sheffield United that's another fantastic piece of business they've been needing wingers since the loss of Danny Grant and Chris Twardick now they have Alua and Malon and maybe Ali Q can do a job in the wing as well they uh, are looking stronger in that area of the pitch maybe still a right winger could potentially come in handy but on the most part I think they're looking good they've also need some defensive reinforcements for reasons I will touch on in a minute but they have brought in Rory Feely who does them, give them a little bit of versatility at centre back and at right back I do really like Rory Feely as well I think he was Waterford's player of the year two years running went to Pats last year did well with them and yeah for Bowes I think it'd be a fantastic signing and he's that type of player that Keith Long will really get the most out of you feel and uh, that's a really good signing I think moving on to Bohemians out uh, Andre Roy first up he was on trial with Kilmarnock that was unsuccessful it does look like he will move back to the UK though but is there a possibility now that that move didn't work out that he could come back to Daly Mount Park obviously they've kind of replaced him already with Georgie Kelly coming in but then with Dini Corcoran and stuff leaving the club already they could definitely do Andre right back at, at the club and I'd say both fans would love to have him back after the last season's uh, great performance from him so yeah I think Andre Wright uh, there's a possibility that he could come back to Daily Mount Park but I do think it's most likely he will end up in League 1 or 2 probably Dan Casey's move to Sacramento has been confirmed a big big blow for Bohemians uh, obviously it was fantastic last season in their uh, rise to second place in the league and uh, he, that's a big loss for them you feel Rory Feely obviously coming in as his replacement but Dan Casey Casey, you feel that's a that's a blow, and um, it's a great opportunity for him to go over to go over to America. Though I uh, wish him the best to look over there, but it is a blow for Bohemians. Another one, Andy Lyons at right back as well. He obviously has stated his intentions of moving abroad to England, and um, he still hasn't been uh, confirmed to be going anywhere just yet. I haven't heard an awful lot on that front, but I do think he's best off I already said this in the video previously as well I think he's best off staying where he is for the time being I think he could do it another year or two with Keith Longside I, I think that would uh, serve him best and uh, moving forward I think that would um make his development a lot better as a player I think Bohemians definitely if they keep hold of Andy Lyons that would be a fantastic uh, contract to get sorted and have that right back option because I think it would push Rory Feely into centre back definitely as well but of course if Andy Lyons is to go they will need to look into getting a right back for sure Derry City have confirmed the signing or re-signing of David Parkhouse obviously he wasn't with them last season but the season before he was on loan from Sheffield United fantastic uh, player he was that year he's got a lot of goals with Derry a lot of cracking goals as well and to bring him in and the main thing about this deal that I loved was that he can't, he's coming in on a three year contract so Derry are getting a really top class player but also potentially getting a huge transfer fee for him if he has a great season or two he still will be in contract I think that's brilliant and League of Ireland clubs need to start doing that more because it's such a shame and a nightmare when League of Ireland players are moving abroad for an absolute pittance and yeah overall I'm really excited to see David Parkhouse back in the League of Ireland I can't wait to see him get going with Derry and I'll say Declan Devine is delighted with that one moving on to Drogheda now and this could be one of the almost underrated signings of the whole window kind of thing so far bringing in Dane Massey from Dundalk could be one of the signings of the season nearly uh, that's how highly I rate him I think everyone rates him so highly but this one's gone under the radar a bit I feel um, such a good signing for them Drogheda already have a really good left back in Connor Kane a uh, 22 year old left back who played all their games last season and was phenomenal at left back for them so it'll be interesting to see how they kind of fit the two players into the starting 11 or if they even can but 
Dane Massey is a perfect kind of tutor for a player like Conor Kane coming into the league. I think Drogheda I do think they will stay up with this squad they've assembled for the upcoming Premier Division. I think I'm really impressed with their business and I think Dane Massey will probably take the lead at left back for this season. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he comes, recovers from that bad injury he picked up last year. He wasn't involved much but I do think this is a fantastic signing for uh, Drogheda. And maybe if they're playing like a back five in some games they're going to be under a lot of pressure they can maybe play Dane Massey as like a left side of centre back or something like that. I do think he has the assets that allow him to do that. He's quite tall as well. I think he's above six foot. Um, so I think uh, draw to have some options there with uh, that addition. They've also brought in a backup goalkeeper in Colin McCabe from Shells who will play as number two, you'd imagine, to David Odomusu who was fantastic in the first division last year. Uh, Colin McCabe had a little bit of a... wasn't didn't have a great season at, with Shells, let's just say. He was okay at times but made some, made some blunders with Shells. So um, he'll be looking to challenge David Odomusu for a starting spot and it'll be interesting to see if he can crack into that first team now Dundalk have got busy very very busy indeed in terms of ins and outs they have brought in Sonny sorry I'm going to have to read from here because it I'm not going to be able to pronounce his name. Sonny Ragnar Natistad, a six foot six centre back who has 31 caps for the Faroe Islands, an experienced international coming to the League of Ireland and that Obviously, we don't know much about these players, but from what you're hearing, that could be a really good addition. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what he's like. And six foot six is a, is an intimidating figure. Um, left back they've brought in as a replacement for Dane Massey. Uh, Roy Ravish Jurkovskis, Latvian left back, 13 caps for his national side. Be interesting to see if this is a, a starting player over Dara Lihi. Um, Dara Lihi obviously was kind of in and out of the team last season with Cameron Dummigan's uh, kind of was kind of playing in at left back and stuff at times so it's interesting to see maybe Filippo isn't the biggest fan of Lee which is a bit of a shame in terms of uh, he's an Ireland under 21 international and stuff like that and he's one of the most promising players in the league I think so to, from to bring in a left back kind of is a little bit is a little bit worrying with the departure of Sean Gannon you think Dunmigan will probably slot in at right back so they have to kind of replace Dane Massey's departure um, so they've, they've done that here I'm be interested to see if this this is going to be a starting player ahead of Lee of course with the retirement of Gary Rogers the departure departure of Jimmy Corcoran and Aaron McCary Dundalk have needed to get busy in the goalkeeper department and they have brought in Alessio Abibi an Albanian goalkeeper uh, don't know an awful lot about him but uh, I've heard a couple of dodgy things about him and people think he might be a little bit of a dodgy one maybe whether he's going to be their first choice or not remains to be seen uh, Alex Rando is another goalkeeper believed to be coming in he's a young American who's believed to be set to sign for John Dock. I think James Rogers said that in an article so that's a that's an interesting one another one coming from America a Scottish midfielder who was let go from an American side Sam Stanton 26 year old midfielder is um uh, Filippo Giovagnoli's number one target to replace the outgoing Jordan Flores there is interest in Sam Staunton from Scotland as well I believe Ross County want to secure his services for next season but it looks like Dundalk will be uh, the ones to sign him whether Giovagnoli knows him from over there um, I'm not 100% sure but that could be a, a possible connection and that might be a reason behind his decision as I mentioned just there Jordan Flores leaving the club a bit of a blow gone to Hull City in League 1 wish him the best of luck over there great move but it's not the worst blow in the world. I mean, he wasn't... I don't think he was a starter under Gio Vignoli. He was always a really good impact sub. He, he had a few cracking goals in him. But he wasn't really... I think I don't think he started in the cup final. I don't think he started in a lot of league games. So, yeah, I think... Um, I don't think it's the worst. Um, it's not like a Michael Duffy leaving or something like that. I don't think it's on the same level as that. But it is a blow all the same. Uh, and obviously, Dane Massey, as I touched on, with Drada leaving the club as well. So, yeah, there's a couple of outs uh, for Run Dock, but plenty of ins. And it looks like it won't stop just there. There's plenty of ins still to come. And could one of them be Richie Tell? As I mentioned in the who I think each LOI team should sign, Richie Tell was one. I said for Run Dock, obviously, there will be interest from Shamrock Rovers in his services as well. The 29 year old hasn't played for Salford since October I don't think um, but it does believe does look like a couple of injuries there and he's on contract uh, till the end of the season so it does look like they will probably want to keep a hold of him as a backup just in case um, but they have brought in a young Salford did bring in a young uh, midfielder on loan from Leeds United I think um, so whether that can free the door open the door a little bit for some wiggle room with Tell uh, leaving the club Remains to be seen. Hopefully, we get to see him uh, sooner rather than later in the League of Ireland. And uh, yeah, it'd be great, great to get him back for 
Dundalk or Shamrock Rovers, though, that'll be that'll be interesting. You'd have to think Dundalk would be the favourites given his history with the club, but you just never know. Money does talk at the end of the day. Finn Harps have confirmed the signing of central midfielder Connor Barry from Galway United. He made 16 appearances in the first division last season for Galway. Uh, was a real mainstay in their midfield. Good player. And that'll add a lot to uh, Ollie Horgan's options in the midfield for next season. And it's clear that Ollie Horgan wanted to improve this area of the pitch because he made another addition in former Sligo Rovers midfielder Will Seymour, who was good in his first season with Sligo was in and out of the team a little bit but I expected them to actually keep him on I think he was probably expected to be kept on by Sligo as well but they did let him go and Finn Harps moved quickly to bring him in uh, good good signing for them I think he'll add a lot of quality to their midfield I think he's a good player and yeah Finn Harps probably have a few more signings still to make but they're looking stronger for next season. St. Pats have made a couple of really, really good signings. John Mountney being the first one. Top quality player. Versatile option uh, in midfield and attack. And uh, he's a great signing. Obviously, he has a relationship with manager Stephen O'Donnell from the Dundalk days. So, yeah, brilliant signing. And he's won it all with Dundalk. Brings that experience similarly to Robbie Benson to St. Pats. And I think they need that if they want to crack into European places and challenge for trophies. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a great move for St. Pats. They've also brought in an attacker in Matty Smith. He was at Waterford last season really kind of versatile player it's kind of a tricky creative force in Waterford's side so he'll add a lot to St. Pat's whether it be kind of maybe off the bench or uh, starting obviously but they've also re-signed with Billy King so it'll be interesting to see if Matty Smith can break in ahead of players like that but he's a great option to have nonetheless. St. Pat's have also confirmed the signing of Sam Bone from Waterford as well great signing huge loss for Waterford at the same time though these two players are big losses for them but for a Pat's they're great signing Sam Bone will add a lot and there is rumours of Luke McNally he has signed back for the 2021 season but there is still rumours that of English interest so if he was to leave worst comes to worst they do have nearly a ready-made replacement in Sam Bowen there ready to go speaking of Waterford the only kind of thing they've made since the last video is they bringing in another goalkeeper Matthew Connor obviously resigning him is good news for them as they have now have two goalkeepers but they need to get a lot busier in the upcoming days weeks and potentially months as well in bringing in players because their squad is paper thin jumping into the first division we'll start off with Bray Wanders who confirmed the signing of Connor Clifford really really good signing he'll be a top first division midfielder no doubt about it he's a good good primary division midfielder so in the first division he will really thrive in this Bray Wanderers side who's shaping up really really well for the new season really excited about what they're going to do next year and I got even more excited when I saw they captured Brandon Kavanagh on loan from Shamrock Rovers for this season surprised a bit though to be honest I'm surprised that I said in the video I'll leave a link to it in the description down below in the video where I said uh, a player that each LOI team should sign LOI Premier Division team should sign I said Brandon Kavanagh would be a great signing for a Longford even there's a couple of teams in the Premier Division that could really do a Brandon Kavanagh he's that good and I'm surprised that Shamrock Rovers have opted to give him another season in the First Division I think he could do with some Premier Division experience at this stage but take nothing away from Bray Wanderers getting this deal done it's a fantastic signing uh, he gives him versatility on the le in left back he can play left mid he gives him that versatility on that flank just as good defensively as he is in the attacking front as well uh, it was very 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 good for the Shamrock Rovers B team last year in the first division so yeah I'm excited to see how he gets on there there is a bit of a Shamrock Rovers kind of contingent building at Bray uh, obviously Keane Clark has come has uh, joined uh, Bray Wanderers uh, Sean Callan uh, Gary Shaw there might be one or two others as well but there really is kind of a Shamrock Rovers contingent at Bray Wanderers so maybe that played some sort of a part kind of let them go to kind of familiar faces and familiar surroundings so um, he'll feel comfort, comforted straight away and he'll really get the best play his best football but still I would have liked to have seen seen him potentially in the Premier Division next season but yeah um, he will get some a lot of first team football at Bray Wanders and he will be a top class first division player no doubt about it moving on to Cork City they've had some fantastic news in that Stephen Beatty has returned to the club a real boost for the football club needed it really um, after last season and kind of the developments off the pitch as well and um, not much of it going right at Cork City so this is a real um, real boost for, for the fans for the players everyone involved really um, to get, get a legend of the club back like that the re-signing of Dylan McLeod as well I wasn't sure whether he would re-sign with Cork obviously I would have predicted some uh, Premier Division interest potentially but definitely some First Division uh, promotion hunters looking for Dylan McLeod obviously a uh, very very talented player and uh, First Division he's proven in that league to be a real top top player so it's for Cork to get him back on board for next season is a real step in the right direction moving on to former Cork manager uh, John Caulfield side Galway United there is a rumoured reunion between uh, Connor McCormack and John Caulfield there's a lot of interest in Connor McCormack from first division and premier division sides uh, it doesn't look like he will stay on with Derry and if Galway can get him on board for next season wow 
the first division is going to be tough it's going to be tough to predict isn't it um, you'd always fancy John Caulfield to be up and about there and if that reunion can take place between Conor McCormick and Caulfield <sighs> If they weren't already, God, we'll be on to watch next season. Moving on to Shells and an out for them is obviously, of course, uh, Carl Shepard, who I think has retired from football. Um, I'm going to put him down as an LOI legend. I think he was a great player. For Cork especially, he was fantastic. For Shells last year, his performances were, weren't the best. And um, he did come in for like regular criticism from Shells fans as a result. It has just come out, though, that uh, he did have... Um, some sort of arthritis that left him fatigued and fatigued and in constant pain. He has come out and said he really felt that he let let Shelburne down last season. It's kind of heartbreaking to hear that, isn't it? Like uh, he seems like a good 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 person, and uh, he did get a lot of criticism last year for his performances. And it feels like potentially something could have been said last year, maybe just to cut the guy some slack. I think it's tough to be criticizing footballers when you don't know what's going on off the pitch and how they're feeling themselves. So yeah, it's tough for him. But uh, I wish him all the best in what is next. Um, I'm no doubt about it that he will go on to smash it so um, yeah best luck to Carl Shepard and uh, I hope everything is okay some great news for Shelburne is that they have brought in Yo-Yo Maddy a fantastic striker I'm so surprised he's staying in the first division next season there was rumours of him going to I think it was Cliftonville in Northern Ireland that fell through um, surprised maybe a Bowes didn't come in for him or some team in the Premier Division because he did score 16 goals in 18 games in the first division last year an unbelievable return and for Shelburne to snap him up wow it's a real, real statement of their intentions. And you have to say, if Shells don't get promoted next season, Ian Morris has got to go. It's as simple as that. He, there is so much pressure on him to deliver the first division title. With that squad that they have in place, it's better than the squad they had last season in the Premier Division. He has to deliver the title. Well, guys, there you have it. A roundup of all the latest in the Premier Division and the First Division in terms of transfers, done deals, rumours, etc. If you did enjoy the video, do drop a like on it. It is much appreciated. If we can hit 50 likes, that would be phenomenal. Really do appreciate it, guys. And if you are new around here and aren't already we would really appreciate it if you could subscribe it means the world to us we are working towards getting up up towards 3000 we're only at the start now but it is a goal we want to hit soon so yeah uh, all your support is greatly appreciated and we hope you're all keeping well during these difficult times and if you are feeling down or low or anything as is as is so common and normal for people during this spell just reach out to a friend family member and uh, just remember that you're not alone during these times it is it is very tough but we will get through it and now that there's a start date for the League of Ireland in place we can have something to really look forward to together so yeah stay strong guys hope you're all keeping well thanks for watching and we'll catch you in a bit